It's Saturday morning, 1995. What are you watching? If you were born yet. Saved by the Bell. Hi, Crystal Balls. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please think about sticking around liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Those are free ways that you can help support me and you can get updates about the channel. Turn on the notifications. I have had some people not so happy that they um, missed out on some videos that I had to take down because of YouTube standards and they are now on Patreon. So if you're upset about that, I'm, I'm sorry talk to YouTube. There's nothing that I can do about their standards and practices, but they're on Patreon. So, um, if you have notification bells set, then you can see these videos. So just kind of an FYI to somebody that is mad at me for following the standards and practices. So whatevs. Um, before I get started today, I do want to take a moment to, um, plug a couple of things here. So I'm going to put up some different t-shirts and cups. This is something that I designed myself. Um, it says basically one star Supreme Court do not recommend. Um, this is something that I am selling through Bonfire in order to raise money for indig Indigenous women rising. Now this is to help Indigenous women get the health care that they need for a variety of different things, including reproductive health, plan B, um, anything from like, it's all women's health issues that they sorely, sorely need. So anything that you buy from the t-shirts, the hoodies, or the cups, none of that goes to me. All the proceeds go to them. And this is a very big cause. Now, I know... You know, everybody has their own opinion on Roe versus Wade. I've given mine, and like I said, I don't, I don't like people thinking they have autonomy over somebody else's body. That's not okay. And from a standpoint of a social worker, this is damaging. I also want to put in a standpoint from a social worker that. This is so damaging that I have to have new training and me and everybody else in my, my same crew have to have new training based on Roe versus Wade because it is that bad. So yeah, thanks Supreme Court for damaging a whole lot of people and I just, I can't believe the state that our country is in. So yeah. If you want to actually do something really good and money that goes to people who truly do need it, please purchase a cup, a shirt, a hoodie, purchase it for a friend, do whatever you want with it, wear it all over, have a couple of coffee mugs. Guys, this is a big, big help. This is a nonprofit, so um, I don't know how it works with taxes. That that is between you and your tax accountant, but um, it is a nonprofit, and I don't know if you can write it off on your taxes or not. I'm not an expert by any means, but just putting that out there, this is like a 501c3 uh, nonprofit, so. Go support them, please. If you don't want to buy a t-shirt or anything, I will link their um, URL down in the description box and you guys will be able to go and look at their site and donate directly to them. You don't have to do it through my stuff. I just, you know, I, I am trying very hard to raise money and awareness for places that absolutely need it and they are definitely someone that needs it. This is legit. This is something that goes to the people so please please check them out check their website out help support them because this is going to get a lot worse before it gets better okay so rant done for a moment and don't forget to check out other ways that you can support me on the channel um in that description box so like 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 subscribe 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 free 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 
<laughs> so if you were like me and you grew up in the 90s and a little bit younger than that, um, you totally watched Saved by the Bell every Saturday morning. That was your jam. And eventually it got on syndication, so it was on after school too. Of course, we all watched it. Saved by the Bell was like a huge thing. And one of the characters on there was named was Screech. Now, he was a lovable, dorky genius who was obsessed with Lisa Turtle. This unrequited love was never quite reciprocal. And sometimes he got a little stocky, and he did get very possessive. The 90s, yeah, we, we still had a lot of ways to go. We still do. Clearly, clearly, we still have a long way to go. Um, but after Saved by the Bell, a lot of the actors went on to different things, and Dustin Diamond, the actor who portrayed Screech, seemed to have a bit of a hard time with typecasting. Now, there were several different spinoffs of Saved by the Bell that he, I believe he participated in almost all of them, if not all of them. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, I believe in 2019, um, and I think it was... Um, small cell cancer. Um, I don't know for sure, but I believe it was some sort of cancer. He had a lot of controversy in his life post Say by the Bells days. So he wrote a tell all book, um, that really bashed everybody, basically made it seem like a sex, drugs, rock and roll orgy type thing that was happening. And everybody was hooking up with everybody else. And it was really raunchy and gross. And you know, I, I don't know if that was true or not. The fact that it was Hollywood doesn't really make it seem that far-fetched. Hollywood is definitely known to be very abusive to children and providing drugs and alcohol and everything that they could possibly want. So, is it a possibility that it happened? Absolutely. But Dustin Diamond years later took steps back from this and said... He did not write it. It was a ghost writer. And the ghost writer um, kind of hyper blew all of his stories. Like the stories, there was like a hint of truth in there, but the rest of it was very hyperbolic. I don't know. I don't know, man, because I see a pattern in his life that was very much a I didn't do it type thing. He also um, reduced released a very disgusting, um, just the thought of it, Saved by the Smell. Okay, guys, adult film with Screech called Saved by the Smell. Okay, apparently, he said years later that that actually was not him, that he was um, superimposed, his face was superimposed over a male model's face. Now, is that true? I don't know. I just have a really icky feeling about it. He also had some legal trouble. Um, he did serve, I believe, four or five months in jail because he and his fiance pulled a knife on somebody. Also, something that he didn't actually, he claimed he did, but he didn't actually go through with it was getting married. Um, he apparently was married to a girlfriend prior, um, but on his death certificate, they actually never legally got married. So I see a couple of instances in his life where he was very much like, not it. I didn't, I'm not committing. I'm not doing this. I'm not, you know, I'm not putting myself out there. So I, I don't know really what his deal was, but I, I can tell you. He was very emotionally immature, incredibly immature, um, and that he was part of the B system, basically, and some of this was not his fault. Some of it was something that he grew up with, and what he was surrounded by, he was surrounded by yes men, he was surrounded by people that would hand him drugs, he was surrounded by people who would give him whatever little whim he wanted, 
And that's what he believed reality was like. And of course, when that went away, he had a very difficult time adjusting to any sort of real life. Um, so we're going to do a bit of a reading on him and see, because I just, I don't know, I keep getting this feeling that he was paranoid. But I also get the feeling that he was also a victim of Hollywood. So we're just going to kind of take a look here. So temperance is kind of patience. I, I feel like he tried really hard to be the person that he wanted to be. There, it's almost like I didn't want to be this person. I feel like I was forced to be this person. Um, I, I was used. I was used from a very young age. I think if he had control over his life and not pushed into acting because I don't think that's something he wanted to do really. I think he would have done something much different. I'm hearing like dentist or something very much very very different from the world of Screech and he was Oh, it's just Hollywood abuse. Um, he was, his ego was inflated. He was made to feel like he was better than, you know, chocolate milk. And he really, really was in love with himself. His ego was so high. But at the same time, he despised himself. Every bit of his puberty and everything like that was public. And he could not break away from this character. And people looked at him and thought that he was Screech. He wasn't. He was a human being. But his own lines in his own mind were blurred between his reality and who Screech was. I really do think he was involved with, yeah, that type of lifestyle. Um, the drug lifestyle, the heroin lifestyle, the... Um, drinking, binge drinking, smoking, like very young. I'm talking like before the age of 10, he was abusing himself. And that was directly self punishment. He did that to himself. And, um, some of it, he understood why he did it and others that he didn't. This is somebody that I can tell you despised himself at a very young age. Why do people at a very young age despise themselves? This allegedly for entertainment purposes only, but they were abused by adults. Abused by adults in Hollywood. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm putting down. Um, he... He had several ab abusers in his life. One was a, a parent or a parent figure. Mother is the first thing that's coming to me. Now, I don't know if it's actually his biological mother or somebody that was a mother figure to him. Maybe a stepmother. Something very much like that. Highly abusive to him. Um, when I mean highly abusive, I mean like um, mentally... Um, very verbally, but not necessarily like there wasn't beatings or anything like that. Now, there were three people in the Hollywood producing line that were all male that did take advantage of him on a regular basis. And this is something that started very early, very early, like maybe even before like Good Morning Miss Bliss, that if you guys don't know that, that was a predecessor to Saved by the Bell. That's what led to Saved by the Bell. There was a whole, um, there was only one season. However, that show went away and Saved by the Bell morphed into what it is, what it was, what it became. Yeah. So, um, I want to say this happened before because I, I feel like he... This was at such a young age that by the time he got to the set of Good Morning Miss Bliss, he was already used to this. Um, I am hearing over and over and over again that there is another co-star. Um, another male um, 
bleach blonde co-star that was also a victim of this and he has the right to protect his privacy on this but it's also a very well-known secret open secret in the hollywood scene um that this happened to both of um dustin and this other co-star this wasn't necessarily the female co-stars although they had issues in other areas other shows um to an extent they all had a lot of mental verbal abuse happen to them but two of them including Dustin Diamond were um, physically assaulted in more than one ways um, they kind of kept it they it was a secret but open between the two of them they both were on the same wheel here but one was in the top one was at the bottom meaning they knew what was happening to one another and at points there was actually jealousy because if you were getting attention by a certain person then you were more likely to have something better happen in the script and the storyline there would be more you um this was not their fault I want to make that abundantly clear that the children victims of this situation, it was not their fault. And they were pitted against one another. And this kind of jealousy situation was created almost out of a Stockholm Syndrome type situation. That was incredibly damaging and disgusting. So um, whatever, you know, Dustin Diamond and this other co-star were involved in whatever rival whatever situation it was it was very deep because the two of them were being abused by the same people but they were being pitted against one another and that, that was bad um this was their upbringing this is what they grew up with and um he wasn't ready to leave. Dustin Diamond was not ready to leave this situation because this is all he knew. This is something that happened in his fundamental years growing up and it messed with his mind. I'm not saying it didn't mess with other people's minds. It did. Clearly it did. There are other co-stars that have had some pretty deep issues and I'm including like long-term guest stars and things like that, that it, it was very, oh, it was very Stockholm syndrome, syndrome and very, very difficult for everybody. But he had the hardest time moving on because his identity was damaged I almost want to say split because when you have certain damage like this done to you repeatedly at a young age that can manifest as DID dissociative identifying or identity a disorder formerly known as uh, multiple personality disorders now I am not a doctor I'm not diagnosing anybody but knowing what I do about it, I can see that being a possibility that that happened to him because he wore a mask and he definitely was very comfortable in different skin, um, acted very differently, very volatile and violent. And other times he was perfectly fine. Um, I, I feel like this was his, his personality very much the chariot very much like I want to go and burn this place down behind me and I'm not taking any survivors but please don't kick me out please don't let me go he kept going back to his abusive situation working with the same people that he did with Saved by the Bell allegedly for entertainment purposes only I don't want to get sued uh, I I know someone. Um, if you guys know, I won't 
mention, but yes, there's a very famous psychic and someone that I adore who is getting sued because they ref they don't put the uh, disclaimer on there, and that's absolutely fine. That's their right, and I understand why, because I don't want to do it either, but I don't want to get sued because, you know, I'm, I don't have any money <laughs> for a college student. Um, the thing is, the Dustin Diamond actually was very creative. He did, he actually had a very creative mind, but it was so warped by the sense of who he was and trying to figure out life in general, but he was an artist. Like he, I think he, um, did some producing. I think he did some writing. I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I can tell you, he really did have an artist soul. He really did, but he was so closed off and damaged because of the situations that he went through that he never got to fully realize that. Now, he did really do a lot of damage and seemed like a very gross person when the Say by the Bell book, Tell All book, came out. There was actually even a Lifetime movie about it. Um, and... I feel like he, he obviously did it for money. Like that's no, you know, that's no secret. He did it for money, but he's also looking over his shoulder. Part of me thinks he doesn't, he didn't want to honestly damage the relationship, but he didn't go after the things that he needed to. He did not talk about the systematic abuse that happened. He talked about his coworkers. He used them as scapegoats. He, he did have pickles of truth in there. I don't know why I said pickles of truth, but that's how I'm going to say it. Um, there was little bits of truth in there and he sold them out for a story. Like these people were going to be, I don't know. Their relationship was difficult um, because of what happened on set, what happened behind the set, they always had a difficult relationship. I really do feel that some of it actually was hatred towards one another. Um, I think there was part of Dustin Diamond that believed that they needed to be knocked down all of them be knocked down a level or two or 16. And as we can see, you know, these are Hollywood people. Clearly they aren't perfect. Like look at, um, Mario Lopez dude could not keep it in his pants long enough to get through his own wedding. I mean, that, that was disgusting. Yeah. There's some bad things going on here, but I don't think it was what he was truly accusing them of. He was skating around the topic of what actually happened. And as an abuse victim himself, the weird way he was crying out for help was tearing everybody down around him. Very much like a child bully. I don't think he ever got past the mentality of, you know, like a fifth or sixth grader because he did not have the capability because of repeated trauma that happened to him. I do think other people were allowed to mature more than he was. He got it really badly. And that, that does make me feel bad for him as a person. Um, but it doesn't excuse his behavior. It, his behavior perpetu perpetuated a cycle. He could have stopped it. So he was always, yeah, he's definitely split. I can kind of see that, but he was also always dancing on this line of what was real and what was fantasy. And he crossed those lines all the time. And I'm not just talking about his character screech. I'm talking about several things that he did as an actor or a producer or a wrestler or whatever he did. He 
had a difficult time telling the difference between reality and fantasy. And he, this is going to sound weird, but he, he walked the line of evil. He liked it. He really did. He was attracted to it, but it's because he had it ingrained in him, it ingrained in him as a child. He followed the path. He liked it. He poked it. He prodded it. He very turned his back against God type situations. Like he was very angry at God. And I'm only saying this because this is what's coming up. The You know, this is, he really just got to the point where money was the only thing that mattered to him. He was completely bankrupt at one point. There was a whole thing about, you know, a YouTuber saving, um, Dustin Diamond's house for like $15. He's about ready to be homeless. The man had a tough life and the way that he went about making money was a cash grab. It was wrong. It caused a lot of harm to people, but I'll be damned if he ever told the truth. He would never, ever, ever tell the truth about what actually happened to him on the set and prior to the set, prior to, you know, basically getting the job on Miss Bliss and, and things like that. He will n never, he would never say that. Um... He did himself a huge disservice. He could have made a difference if he had stood up for people like him and children like him in his life. But he was so self-serving, especially towards the, you know, 30s, 20s, 30s um, of his life. He was so self-serving that he would give him, give of himself to himself, not to other people. And... I feel like there were a few people that knew him, but nobody ever actually knew him. He had, nobody actually ever knew him. So he had a few people in his life that was close, but I can tell you just by the guards, the, the kind of cards I've been getting, he really did not allow people in. He just kept them at bay did not want them around, didn't tell. It was shame, 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 shame. He had a lot of shame in his life and he did a lot of ridiculous things as a result of this. And he wasn't always there. He checked out a lot and not just with drugs and alcohol, but he just kind of let whatever take over him. And when his death was a relief to him, but it, I'm not trying to underplay his life or anything like that. It was something that was very desperately hard for him. And he made some very selfish, ridiculous mistakes, but he also was a victim of horrible trauma and I feel like he manifested the disease into himself to some extent he allowed himself to be open to a lot of different things that were very willing to take him down I don't think he ever would have spoken up about what actually happened what the truth he was behind the scenes because of his fear because he blocked out a lot of it, um, because he had to do what he had to do to keep one foot in front of the other. And also he was afraid that he was going to get killed or his mother was going to get killed. Like it was, it was very much a situation where he believed that he was in danger. Um, he's not upset about being so self-sabotaging because that was a lesson that he needed to learn in this life. I want to make it very clear that this is just not him. He's not the only one. He's one of many who have had um, the abuses that happened on set. And it was a very open but not talked about secret 
it still is but back then it was even worse and I just see this rival rivalry sorry between him and this other co-star that it was almost seething but it really was a product of the situation that they were put in not because they honestly disliked each other but I don't feel any love lost between the two of them when Dustin passed from this world. I don't really feel a lot of love lost between him and a lot of people, which is incredibly unfortunate. And this is not the legacy that he wanted to leave on this world. He was so far away from that child who wanted to be a dentist when he passed away. And that's incredibly sad. So that's just kind of my reading on Dustin Diamond and it's it's a, it's a very tragic story and I just I wish he would have told his truth because it could have helped others in his situation. Could have would have should have, you know. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this reading. I know it was a little rough. Um I will remind myself to put a trigger warning in the beginning, but um, everybody remember that every single day is a gift. Use your time wisely, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.